Hi, welcome to this Facebook Live with Richard Cole, where we take your birding questions. And today we're going to have some really fun times with the trivia questions, and you can you can take part in it and put your answers down in our comments and and uh, participate with this Facebook Live with the founder Richard Cole of Cole's Wild Bird. Yes, you know we uh, we've told you a lot about hummingbirds in the, in the past, so we're going to give you a test today. Make sure you've been listening this whole time. A lot of our questions have to do with migration. Like I said, just write your answers down just for fun to see how good you are. I'm going to read some true or false questions or some fact or fiction questions out, and this will give you time to write your responses in the comments. And then Richard's going to go back through and answer these. So fact or fiction, to make the long trip to Central America, hummingbirds rides hummingbirds ride on the backs of geese. So give us your answer. Their long bills are needle sharp and will pierce your hand if you try to grab them. So give us your answer. Is that fact or fiction? Also, ruby-throated hummingbirds can fly 20 hours nonstop to cross the Gulf of Mexico. Is that fact or fiction? It's a long way. It is a really long way. And hummingbirds don't have legs. Fact or fiction? And on this one, true or false, if you leave a feeder out in the fall, your hummingbirds will stay and not migrate. And our last one, fact or fiction, hummingbirds can survive freezing weather. So go ahead and, and participate with us and give us your answers. We want to kind of check in and see who does well. Also, if you don't want to participate in that, we'd love to just see where you're watching from. So just put in the comments, you know, where you are, what city you're in as you're watching this today. And don't forget, Richard is here to answer any birding question. He is the expert. So let's go through these now. So our first one, fact or fiction, Richard, to make the long trip to Central America, hummingbirds ride on the backs of geese. That sounds plausible, I mean, or, or necessary. These guys are so small. I mean, how many birds like that, not near as fat as that little finger? They only weigh a couple of grams. And that's uh, across the Gulf of Mexico is 500 miles. And uh, it's a nonstop flight. They stop flapping, they drown. So can they do that? Absolutely. They have no trouble doing that. Wow. Uh, it is amazing. They're probably one of the most amazing creatures. And, and that's, that's one of the reasons this time of year you see them hanging at the feeder so much. They're on their southward move. They've got things. They've got a long way to go. They need a full tank. Fats are reserved. So they'll sit and eat as much sugar as they can, catch as many insects as they can for the proteins, get as fat as they can for this flight. When they get down to the Gulf area, some of them, some of them go around the land bridge all the way around down through Mexico. A lot of them in the eastern United States go right on across the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> Nonstop, about 20 hours. They average around 25 miles an hour. So these little guys can scoot. Yeah, and do you think that rumor got started because people just find it so unbelievable yes. that a little bitty hummingbird could do that? Yes, absolutely. We, we do tend to think of them in human terms in a way. Something that small, can't, like a little baby, they can't help do anything. They, they, they're, they're just uh, stuck. They, they can't fly that far. They're delicate. They're weak. They couldn't they're possibly fly that far, and they do. They yeah. gain a lot of weight before they go. They take off, and they do not stop all the way into it's, Central America. It's amazing. And then they come back, and they do it again and again, yeah. year after year. Okay, so let's move to our next question. Their long bills are needle sharp and will pierce your hand if you try to grab them. I'm going to guess on this. That's got to be false. You always grab them. Is it? You see all the holes in the... <laughs> this, I, people look at birds like that, and especially hummers, they, they don't ever get them up close to observe them. They mm -hmm. see them, and they see these long bills, and they they don't ever see the bill open. So, so they, they think they're needles. They think they're so sharp. They also think they suck up the nectar like a straw through that little tube, and they believe it's very sharp, and it is not at all. Yeah. It, it's like most birds' beak. It's, it's fairly hard, but it's certainly not sharp. And they don't suck nectar up through the little hole in the end. <laughs> it will open up very wide. Yeah. I, I observed one hummingbird one time who, there was a bumblebee, of all things, on the feeder. This little bird came up, opened his bill, grabbed the bumblebee, and flipped it back over and went to the feeder. I'd wow. I've never seen anything like that. It just got the bee out of its way. So when it opens up, it's like, oh, that, that really opens. Wow. So, yes, they have a regular Don't you wish bill. you'd gotten video of that? Yeah, it, I tried, and it <laughs> didn't happen again. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's one of the things they can do. They've got a, they've got a bird beak, very much like the others, just, just longer. Mm -hmm. And their tongue is just like a little brush. 
a lot of little pieces on it that goes down the nectar, slurps it right back up. <laughs> slurps it. I love it. So I'm just, if you see me looking down here, I'm listening, but I'm just trying to monitor whether or not we get any comments yet on, on these. So now let's go through ruby-throated hummingbirds can fly 20 hours nonstop to cross the Gulf of Mexico. Yes, and I think we just touched yeah. on that. They can't. They're, they're amazing. Uh, the ruby throats in the east have that trip to make. Some of the ruby throats will go around and go through the southern states and around down to Mexico. Now, the, not to say that the western birds are, mm -hmm. are wimps or anything, because they, especially the rufous in the western states, migrate coming up all the way up into uh, Alaska, southern Alaska, wow. and then into Canada, and where their breeding things, uh, territories are, then they, they migrate all the way back down, not over water mm -hmm. generally, but all the way back down into Central America. So they make this tremendous trip also. So they're no wimps either over there, although the ruby throats do fly nonstop across the Gulf of Mexico. I don't think that any hummingbirds are really <laughs> wimps. They are one <laughs> tough little bird. And they're tough, yeah, they yeah. really are. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Hummingbirds don't have legs. Well, you can see why that. People see these birds, and how many times do you see their legs? Unless you're looking at a feeder very close, you don't see them. They're little bitty legs. They have them. And some people thought, well, they, they never perch and never land, so they just see them flying around, and they get up in a tree, they can't see them. So they thought, well, they, I don't know how that really got started, but you, I've heard it a lot. They don't, do they have legs? Yeah, they do. And they're decent-sized little legs. We know because the banders take and pull the little legs out from under the fur and put a bracelet on it. That's right. That's where they ban them. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I see them all the time because I have hummingbird yes. feeders, so you see their little legs. But they would have a hard time landing or feeding or doing anything yeah. without those legs. So if you leave a feeder out in the fall, your hummingbirds will stay and not migrate. That is probably one of the most persistent stories I've heard. Uh, and so many people believe that. Now, is it true or not? No, it's not. It's not. But it sounds there again. It sounds plausible because the way we think as humans, there's food there. They come to the feeder, so they're going to stay here and die in the wintertime because they're not going to leave because there's food right here. They're smarter than that. The reason they're at your feeder is because they've already left from where they were they're moving south, and they're hitting the feeders along the way. They remember from year to year where they were. They'll check a good food source on their, on their it's like a, the Howard Johnson's on the road to Florida. Exactly. They just put, they know there's one's right down here. They pull in and stop. If it's not, if it's not open, they go on to the next one. So they, they know what they're doing, and uh, they'll make it all the way down there. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Amazing little creatures. Okay, so our last one, hummingbirds can survive freezing weather. There's another one that sounds, how do they? We get back to what we were seeing earlier. They're small. They're so delicate. They're weak. They're helpless. How could they possibly survive in the wintertime? On top of that, they drink nectar from flowers. A couple of things wrong with that is they, they really don't live on nectar. That's simply an energy source. They live on insects. And huh. you, if you watch them very carefully, you'll see them hawk one out of the air. They'll fly out off a limb, grab one, and come back. You might not see the insect because it's very small. They get around the bushes. There's gnats and small animals. Small animals. <laughs> yeah. They eat small animals. And there's gnats and small insects in the bushes. They'll get those. And uh, even uh, inside the flowers, you see little small spiders think they will eat those. That's their building block for a living. That's their protein. That's their fats. And they, they use the nectar is simply a Snickers bar for energy. So uh, Interesting. I didn't realize that. I thought the, they could live on nectar. The, the flower, they will not. People make that mistake sometimes. who will capture a, 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 an injured bird or something, and they, they feed it nectar, and, of course, it doesn't live very long. Oh, wow. They will die. And uh, the, the birds uh, don't have flowers in the wintertime, so we suspect, well, they, they, they can't survive here. Yeah. But they're not doing that. We uh, had a bird in uh, north Georgia that we captured uh, probably seven or eight years ago. And I went up there to see it. Somebody reported it, that there was a bird here in the wintertime. And I believe it was January, and there was snow on the ground. And we went up there, and here, sure enough, this bird was coming to a feeder. And I watched the bird, and coming back to the feeder, he'd go over and perch in a drink, wait 15, 20 minutes, come back, sip at the feeder. While I was watching it from a secure spot, I was over by some bushes inside the house. And I realized, I'm looking around, there's snow on the ground, there's gnats flying. 
in the bushes. The sun had hit the side of the house. It was warm enough. The gnats got up and they're flying. So, oh, my goodness, there's insects here. Yeah. So these birds find the food. They're good at surviving. This was a rufous hummingbird. It's a western species, mm -hmm. which spends the winter here. Some of them do. Not many, but a few spend the winter here. So it was getting along just fine. Wow. It stayed there the entire winter and moved out. Wow, that is fascinating. Yeah. I love that you're so observant of nature because you got into watching the birds probably and yeah. then you became so observant about nature. It's, it's hard not to. You see yeah. these things and, and, and it's almost like it's not real. They can't do this. And yeah. I've learned so much myself because a lot of these things we were talking about sound plausible because these are, little, these are tough, mean little birds and they're very good at surviving.